Welcome back everybody, Lance with Live Rogue. Today we're going to be going over how to make a repeater using your typical handheld Bofong radios. I have a couple of different types of radios here just to kind of show you. Um, one of the biggest requirements on this is that the radio, when you open up this little rubber cover where you would put a mic or headphones, whatever it is, it has the female jack ports on it. If you go to some of these type of radios, this one here is the UV82, and this is a supposedly waterproof type, but if you notice we open up that jack, it doesn't have them ports. This is more of your Motorola style of connection. So for this particular application, this type of radio wouldn't work. For demonstrations, I'm using these lesser expensive type radios. This is the BV888, uh, still a good radio. They're four watts, uh, dual band radio. The biggest thing about them is they have to be programmed with a computer. You can't uh, do it by hand. I mean, my old faithful here, you have the BV uh, F5, uh, probably one of the most popular radios. This is what I use mainly. Large component of this making the repeaters, we have to tie these two radios, radios together. You have to take one of the cables and plug it into the mic side, which is a 2.5 millimeter male end, and then the other cable has to be plugged into the speaker side of the opposing radio, which is a 3.5 millimeter. Now, I went ahead and spent the extra money and went all out and got this two dollar and something cent cable that's already uh, 2.5 to 3.5. Uh, if you don't do that, you can just do a 3.5 and then buy you a reducer, put them together whichever works best for you. <clears throat> now, one of the things about this, for a repeater, what we're using a repeater for is to extend the range of our communication. Basically what a repeater does is it receives and transmits on the same frequency. Well, essentially that's what we're getting ready to do with two radios. The, ra the Bullfung handheld doesn't have the ability to receive and transmit simultaneously, so we use two radios and we use what's called an offset to have whichever channel, whichever radio is receiving is gonna turn around and send to the radio that's transmitting and that's gonna be on a slight different, same frequency but with an offset so that it can still be picked up. <clears throat> so first off, to start out, I wanna show you one of the things we have to do, we have to hack this cable. If I was to take this cable and just plug in the 3.5 millimeter into the speaker side of this one, and then I take this end of it and plug the 2.5 millimeter side into the mic side of this one. So if I push the talk button on this particular radio, you can see the green light lights up. So this radio is receiving, but you also see this radio is continuously transmitting now. If I pull the cable out, it doesn't transmit any longer. So one of the things we have to do before we can go any farther is we have to hack this cable. What we need to do is we need to cut the ground in here because it's the ground that's continually transmitting. It's causing it to transmit. Now on this three section pin here, this very bottom section between this black line and the end of it, that's where your ground's at. So we're gonna take this wire, we're gonna cut it, we're gonna determine which one of these is the ground and then we're gonna cut that wire and that should solve our problem of continuously transmitting. So what we do now <clears throat> is we take our handy dandy wire strippers and on the 3.5 side we're just going to very carefully kind of cut that sheath. We don't want to cut into them wires that are in there because then we're just going to kind of defeat the purpose of what we're doing. So on this part of it you just want to be very careful and cut that sheathing so you can expose the wires that are on the inside of it. As we get the sheath, the outer sheath cut, kind of just pull back this covering where you can expose the wires on the inside. Try to be careful that you don't break anything. Uh, the wires are pretty small. And then this particular wire, you can see that there's a copper wire, a red wire, and a white wire. Most likely, that copper wire is going to be our ground. Now manufacturers of the wires, it's going to be different. I mean I've seen them to where the 
ground wire is a green one. I've seen them to where they're yellow. I've seen this just kind of depends. How we're going to determine, make sure if that copper wire is in the ground. Just to be safe, we'll grab a multimeter. We'll just put it on a continuity test. So it's going to give us a tone. So like we talked about before, this very end section, the closest to where the fat end is the ground. So if we take that, put it right there, touch the other side of the copper wire, you can see that that's the right one. If I go to the front pin, I'm not getting any signal in either one of the other pins. So I know for a fact that that copper wire is the ground. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to separate it out. And since I don't have a really high-tech uh, pair of snips, I've got the, this old handy. This works good for snips. I'm just going to take it and I'm going to cut this copper wire. Since it's an unsheathed copper wire, we need to make sure that we get every single one of them. And once we get all of them copper wires cut, that should make it to where we don't have a ground connected anymore. Real simple way to test again, we'll grab a multimeter put it on where we know the ground is there. And we're gonna put it on the opposite side of where we cut. Oh, that right there is telling me that we got, there it is, there's a tiny little wire in there that's still connected. It only takes one small wire to make that connection. And since we have that still connected, we need to make sure that we get that cut. And now we got that last little wire cut we didn't see. Let's go ahead and test it one more time. Okay, so we're not getting any continuity. So that means that we've got all the ground cut. So just for the time being, we'll dress this up in a minute. Let me go ahead and plug this in to the radios. So we got 3.5 goes into the mic side. The 2.5 goes into the speaker side. I transmit, if, we, if that was our problem, then when I transmit, this radio is receiving. I let off that button, and now the red light goes off. The wire is still connected, but it's no longer transmitting. Same and vice versa. This radio is going to receive because it's just not any problem. This is your problem. Your, your receiving radio is the issue. So that's why we had to cut the ground. So now, you can see this one's receiving, this one's transmitting. I let go of the button, it's no longer transmitting. So that has fixed our problem. So all we're going to do right now is we're just going to take and heat shrink and dress this up a little bit, make it stable, because we don't want that, you know, we want to go a little better job than 